Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Steam Watchers. Steam Watchers is brought to you by Mythic Games. It's for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. Steam Watchers unfolds in a frozen Europe, broken by an ice age that followed a brutal water level increase. In those hostile conditions, nomadic clans struggled to survive with the regular and puzzling outbreak of steam columns everywhere on the continent. These columns are a testament to intense subterranean heat sources. They free Earth from the grasp of ice and allow mankind to grow food. These oases of heat are vital for survival and unfortunately only transient. To make things worse, a strange sickness spreads around them, the bane. It affects both mind and body, and to this day, no cure has been found. Handling it is necessary to the survival of all clans. In Steam Watchers, you play as the leader of a nomadic clan. You will struggle over the geothermal resources of Europe in scenarios that last from three to six rounds. And at the end of the last round of the chosen scenario, the winning clan is the clan with the most resources, steam columns and farms. But beware, for a clan can reach dominance by acquiring 10 geothermal resources before the end of the scenario and thus claim victory. All right, just a quick look at setup. Some key things here, obviously the main board, the frozen Europe, which is really pretty cool as you try to survive in this new world. Um, let's take a look at these player boards, your different clans. Down in the bottom left of the board is the clan name and its designated icon. And then above that is your special actions that you might be performing throughout the game, like a forced march, things like that. Um, in the middle of the board is where your fuel is and contraband. Then to the right of the fuel is your supply gauge. Now, the supply gauge does a couple different things. So it is your army size that you can currently deploy and have out in the frozen wasteland. Um, but also it reminds you in the small number how many geothermal resources you need to maintain an army of that size. All your elite units and your regular soldiers are all one point of that supply gauge. And then to the right of that, it shows your elite soldier, its name and special ability. All again, all the different clans have special abilities for their elites, which is pretty cool. And then finally on the far right of your board is the incubation gauge. Now this shows the effect of the bane on your clan and the consequences associated with it. And then finally you have the combat dial, which you'll be using throughout the game, obviously, to bid how much fuel to use against your opponents. Now, moving back to the board, one of the big things to take note of is that you will be looking at a specific scenario card. And in this case, we have a, a default card or a tutorial card, really. It is the Miracle Algae. And the thing here about this is that it gives you some specific setup instructions for the particular game. They're gonna have a bunch of different types of scenarios in the game, but we only have a couple for the tutorial as we learn to play it here. But you know, it does give you special steps. In this particular case, this card can change hands and gives you additional resources as you win battles. But in setup, it is going to give every player an additional elite deployed to the board. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that could go with these. I'm excited to see what all the different types of missions or scenarios are going to be. Once all the players have all the setup for their particular clans, then you can place your markers on the Conclave. Now, the Conclave will do a ton of different things as you progress through the game. So where you position here also determines player order, but you'll do this in turn order and we'll take a quick look at that in a minute. But the thing here is that you're also going to be pulling deployment cards and that'll also rotate around. You'll pick a card and pass it on and so forth. And then you'll be deploying your forces to the continent as described in the deployment cards. Along with deploying your troops, you're also going to place farms and a steam tower. Now you're also gonna draw three steam watcher cards, which will allow three more towers to be placed out in the world, which hopefully you can tap into at some point. And each player will place their tracker on the geothermal gauge on the five spot. Now you'll set your supply token then at 10 and you'll be ready to start the game. 
And so every round of the game has five phases. And the really neat thing here is these phases are very, very thematic to the game. Really like it. So the first one is the conclave. And that's where you come together, all the clans, and you determine who's doing what. And these are special actions that happen. Things like getting steam cards and so forth. We'll take a look at it in a minute. But it also helps to determine play order. And then secondly, you have the thaw. And the thaw is when you're playing steam cards from your hand that you may have acquired in other rounds or this round and getting more steam columns out into the world. And then phase three is order planning. You have your order tokens and you're gonna be marching, you're going to be attacking, defending, things like that. And then round four is resolving those orders. And the neat thing is when you place those orders, you place them face down. So everybody does that simultaneous, which really helps speed up the game. I really like that. And so the final phase of the round is the whiteout. And this is where steam towers start to become less active. All right, let's take a closer look at the conclave. Now, in a five player game, you'll add an additional item to this conclave track. Now, the first item we're looking at here is the watchers. This actually takes place at the first and fourth position. So what you're doing is you're drawing three cards from the steam column track. You're gonna pick two of these and put one back. And you really can hold on to these cards as long as you want and you really know it's hand size limit, but you're gonna be playing them in the Thaw. And then you have the Archon, which is the second position. You're gonna be going to the Archon deck, drawing two cards secretly, uh, picking the one you want, and this acts kind of like an event. It actually globally will affect things in the game. It also is a good way to track the rounds, but you'll pick one and put it into play and put the other at the bottom of the deck. In this game, you can create contracts, but if you pick this third position, the Karaners, you can use this token to put in an ice flow area that doesn't take up one of the contract spots. So it's pretty handy for later in the game. Fourth position is the Watchers, like we said. Now the fifth is the Primus. And the, here what you're gonna do is really use this token here to hold a spot for the next round when you're picking on this Conclave track. Now for phase two, known as the Thaw, again, all these phases are super thematic, but what you're doing is, as a watcher, you're gonna be playing one of your steam column cards and then placing a steam column out into the world. And the thing here is when you do place those, as there happens to be a farm in that location, the farm gets removed and put back in the general supply. Phase three, order planning, is all about taking your order tokens and placing them in your areas that you control with units. Now, the thing is, is that you have three different types. You have move, you have defense, and you have decoy and you choose which of those to place and then we're going to activate those orders. Move is just like it sounds. You're gonna be moving your forces from their current location into an adjacent, unless you use a special action of the forced march, which allows you to move two spaces. Now, move also can invoke a battle, moving into a space with other clans or if you choose to just move and spread out across the board and you don't leave a place for you to retreat to, either other units or a beacon, you can place a beacon even if you vacate the area. Um, if you don't have that retreat spot in some way, then you enter into battle and you're wiped out, then you truly are wiped out. All your forces are gone because they had nowhere to retreat to. However, if they have a retreat spot, then you're only gonna lose one of those forces. The defense token allows you to do one of three things. You can build a turret, building up strength in an area. You can mobilize troops, adding more soldiers or an elite to your area. And you can barter with the carriers, build that contract with them. So those are very interesting things you can do with that defense. Obviously giving you more strength in battle is really one of the big keys there. So combat, when you move into another clan's area, combat ensues. So. First, you're gonna to total up all your troops, getting that base level strength. And you're looking for your regular soldiers, which will give you one each. And for every elite you have, will give you two each. Now, if you have a defense token in the area, it adds another strength to that. And if you've built up a turret, that adds two more. So there's a lot of possibilities that can happen in these battles. Now, there's also the ability to ask for support from an adjacent spot from one of your troops. If you have order tokens there, you can choose to discard those and use those um, troops as support for that battle. So you'll get that initial strength value and move to phase two of the battle, which 
you will be using the wheel. And this is where you'll be betting how much fuel you're gonna to add to the battle that adds strength to your troops. So you have to have the fuel to spend to do this, but each player involved in the battle will secretly choose and then reveal and add those totals to each of their respective forces. So whoever has the most strength will win the battle. And what do you get for winning the battle? Well, you get to claim victory and hold that spot, but the loser will have to retreat. And again, if they don't have a spot to retreat to, they're gonna lose every one of their troops. Hopefully they have that spot to retreat to. And if they do, they'll move their troops back, but they will still lose one of the soldiers and those will go back to their supply. And they become demoralized. And you'll get one of these red cubes showing that in your spot. And what that means is that you can't leave the area while you're demoralized. And your army strength is reduced, divided by two and then rounding down. So demoralized is rough. Then after all the players complete all their orders, do all the things, then you move to the final phase of the round, which is whiteout. And the first thing you're doing is looking at your steam columns and they're all gonna start reducing by one. Now, if you have a steam column that's already at one, you have the choice here of one that you control, that is, to remove it and replace it with a farm. Doing so will cost you a fuel though, and also move the incubation track up by one. And then for every steam column that gets reduced where you have troops, we'll also move that incubation track up by one because the bane is affecting your people. Ah, oh, it's rough stuff. And then you'll finally, you'll refill all the fuel on your player boards. And then you're gonna move to geothermo resources, getting those resources that you've been after the entire round. So for every farm that you have, you'll get one resource for each farm. And then for every steam column that you control, for every level of that steam column, you'll get a resource. And then if there's any special things going on in the game, like Archon cards, or even the scenario that might give you additional resources, you'll collect those as well. And then you're checking to see if anybody has reached level 10 for their geothermal resources. And if they have, that will trigger the end of the game. Now there is a bit of an upkeep at the end. And one of the things you're looking for is after collecting all those geothermal resources, that the forces you have on the board match what your board says. And if you have enough supply in order to have that amount of troops out on the board. So that's something you're looking for, for sure. And then there's some, definitely some other upkeep. Like if you have demoralized cubes, those get removed. If you have any contracts going on, you'll remove those, things like that. But you're gonna clean up and get ready for the next round. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, you know this game has a lot of depth to it. But what's neat, is that it really is the basics of play. It's easy to jump in and get a handle on what you're trying to do. Now, getting a handle on all the strategies and how to approach the different land areas, you know, from the mountains to the plains, to the ice flows, things like that, you know, there's a lot of strategy about how you place your troops and how you go about that. And all the different elites and their different abilities really adds a lot to the game. I found this one to be really, really engaging. And these miniatures, wow, super impressed with these. Even in prototype form, they're just incredible. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.